Have you ever found yourself fumbling around with your necklace clasps, feeling a little bit foolish? Well, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to show you exactly how to open and close every single one of your crystal necklace clasps. My name is Sheila from Satin Crystals. I invite you to like and subscribe to our videos as we are always releasing new tips and tricks for your crystal jewelry. Now let's begin. I'm going to show you from the most popular necklace clasps all the way to the least popular, but after that, you will have an overview and an idea on how to use your necklace clasp without fumbling any further. For the first example, we are going to show you our most popular clasp that we use on most of our necklaces here at Satin Crystals. And this is called the toggle clasp. These are all examples of different toggle clasps. And once you do get a hang of it, it is very simple, but I have met numerous people who have encountered the toggle clasp for the very first time and there's always a little bit of a struggle. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works. Now one side of the toggle clasp will have a ring and the other side will have a bar. The ring side could be any shape. Usually it is a circle, but you could also find it in a heart shape like this. It could be a square. It could be any kind of open shape where a ring could go through. This one is a little designer one which has a snake design on both ends. So in addition to the different shapes, it can be different designs, it can be different metals. So you have a whole world of toggle clasp. Now how to use the toggle clasp is, I'll show you on this one here, this is our obsidian and shungite necklace. It has a large twist copper toggle clasp, so it'll be easy for you to see. So as I said, one side is the ring and the other side is the bar. So all you need to do is place the bar straight through the ring perpendicularly until that side of the necklace is inside of the ring and then lie it flat so that it locks into place. And this toggle clasp will be tension held when you are wearing this necklace. So it won't easily slip out until you actively take the bar again and slide it through the ring. And there you go. You'll, un or you'll release the toggle clasp for your necklace. So as I said, these are all different designs and you could even have some that are inscribed. This one here I have worn for a while, so as you can see, it's a little bit tarnished, but one side says life is and the bar says good. So toggle clasp can also be used for bracelets. They can be incorporated into the design of the jewelry. They don't have to hide in the back. The benefit of toggle clasps is that, is that they are very sturdy. So for all of these necklaces here, our gemstones are very weighty compared to your fashion uh, plastics or glass or clay or what have you. So gemstones need a little bit more security, especially these triple strand ones, like this triple strand obsidian necklace has a toggle clasp to keep it all in place. This crystal cola one has a heart toggle clasp to keep those strands in place. And then all the different stones could always benefit from some security in a toggle clasp. So there, there you have it, the first class that you will encounter for sure if you have any satin crystals um, necklaces is the toggle clasp. The second most popular type of necklace clasp that you will find, especially at Satin Crystals, is the Lobster Claw Clasp. Now, as you can imagine, it is named after what it resembles, which is a lobster claw. So these ones also come in a variety of sizes, a variety of metals, and the benefit of these is that they are very easy to use, especially if you have the large lobster claw clasps compared to the tinier ones, which you need a little bit more dexterity. For me, I love to use the larger the better, especially for these heavy gemstones like the serpentine necklace here. It needs something much more secure. So you use the lobster claw clasp and it's pretty self-explanatory. You just have a little lever here on one end and you just need to open it and you clasp it onto the ring 
on the other end of the necklace. So here is our Bloodstone and Howlite necklace. It has a large gunmetal lobster claw clasp and you just clip it on and off. Very easy, except I just missed it right now. <laughs> Very easily clipped on and off and it'll stay very secure. The only downside is if there is a mechanical failure within the spring of the lobster claw clasp, that could um, break the clasp and you'll have to replace the whole clasp. So here we have all the different types of clasp. There's also a swivel version. So this one is called a swivel lobster claw clasp because the whole thing is able to turn 360 degrees, so that gives it a little bit more flexibility in the necklace. This ruby necklace here has a lobster claw clasp. It's a little bit different shaped, but it has the same concept. And it also has an extension chain, so you can clasp the uh, lobster claw anywhere along the chain, so that makes it a little bit more adjustable in size. This necklace, our angelite cloud necklace, is incorporating two lobster clasps right in the front of the necklace. So at, at the pendant, you can see there's two different lobster claw clasps. You can, you can just open one side, you can take them both off, you can make a whole new design, whatever you like, but this one has the clasp on the front. So all kinds of ways that you can use your lobster claw clasps. Next, we have the spring ring clasp. So the spring clasps are similar to the lobster claw clasps, except that they usually only come in very tiny and small little clasps. So they're not ideal for the heavy gemstones. You'll usually see them on these delicate chains like these. And so you might have a little trouble fumbling around with a tiny little spring, but if you don't, then it is quite easy to use, similar to the lobster claw where it has a little lever on one side that you just press and it opens and closes and there's a tiny little hole where you place it into the ring on the other side of the necklace. And it comes in silver and gold usually, it comes in different metals, but not very many designs other than this shape. This is the spring shape. And again, just like the lobster claw clasp, it can also, the spring within the clasp can malfunction and you'll have to replace the whole clasp. So there you have it, spring ring clasps. Here we have the hook and eye clasp. So this clasp involves a hook on one side and a ring on the other side where the, cla the clasp just, or the hook just easily clasps into the ring and the necklace is held in place with tension just like the toggle clasp. Here we have it in the selenite necklace. There's a little hook, it just goes into the other side's ring and it holds into place. So you just have to be careful that the hook is secure. So you wanna make sure that you can close the hook a little bit so that the clasp does not easily come out when you are wearing it. This carnelian necklace has the hook and eye incorporated into the front of the design. So you can unhook it here on the front and you don't have to fumble with it in the back of your neck. And then we have this chrysoprase necklace here, has a large hook and eye, but the hook actually doesn't go through the whole it doesn't go through the whole, uh, or the, the ring doesn't go through the whole hook, it just goes through half of the hook and secures that way. And these, of course, as you can see, come in all kinds of designs as well. Here's a hook and a little chain. That's the one you saw in the chrysoprase. And here's one with a little kitty with a ball of yarn, and that would just hook on to the ring as well. And you can incorporate that into your design. It would be very cute as well. So there you have it, hook and eye clasps. Here are examples of barrel clasps or screw clasps. So these are screwed together. This one is actually a very big barrel clasp. Usually you only find them in the smaller sizes. So as you can see, one side just screws into the other side. Very easy, very secure. However, 
when it is on a necklace, it kind of twists the necklace all up when you are screwing and unscrewing it. So you do have to keep that in mind as it could wear down the necklace easily. This one here is a plastic barrel clasp that is on this amber necklace here. And here is a metal one on the leather chain. This is a metal barrel or screw clasp. So those are different types of screw clasps. These are all adjustable necklaces. So these don't have a clasp. Well, don't necessarily have a clasp, but they are tension knots or tension ties. So I'll show you here. The first one here is threaded. This multi-strand aquamarine necklace has a threaded knot at the top, which you can adjust as you slide it up or down, depending on what length you want to wear your necklace. We have these snake chains. This citrine necklace is adjustable at the little ball here, which has a piece of silicone on the inside, and you just need to pull open or close, depending on what size you want the chain. This one here is a silver version, which our Labradorite Moon is on. These also have the lobster claw clasps and the adjustable knots, so those are dual purpose. Then we have our red jasper bull necklaces, and I have two versions of it. This one is knotted with adjustable knots, so you can just pull one side is loose and the other side is tight. So you can adjust it to your preferred length and you can open it all the way up so that you can slide it over your head and then you can adjust it shorter as well. So those are adjustable knots. And then the more professional version, there are little metal pieces that you can make adjustable knots, sliding knots. So all you need to do is glue one side of your cord into the closed end, and then you put the other side of the cord into the open end, which will, which will um, allow you to pull the cord open and closed, just like the other one, but it has more of a professional look. So those are all adjustable knots, and you just have to be very careful because of course all of the pulling and pull, pulling and adjusting of the knots will wear it down in time, especially these metal ones. So just use it with care, just like you should with all of your jewelry, adjustable knots. These are examples of knot clasps. So unlike the sliding knot, these do not slide, but they do have a knot on one end of the cord and then a loop on the other end. So the knot is a little bit bigger than the loop, but when you do want to take it in and out, you can just slide it through. And that'll be held in place with tension as well when you are wearing the necklace. This is a Ulexite necklace and our Sunstone necklace. This is on a twisted cord and it has a smaller knot, but it does the same thing. So you can just open and put it back through. The thing with this is that it can fray. So the thread will fray after a while because of all that knotting and unknotting. Here we have our magnet clasps. Now magnet clasps, I do not use much at all because they are not good at holding large heavy gemstones. So you do need to have extra strength magnets in order to use it with gemstone necklaces, which I do have here with our jade necklace. However, as you can see this necklace or the, this clasp here is very, very weak. So it would not hold much. We do have stronger magnets, but the downside is that they attract all of the metal around them. And in the end, your jewelry collection could just look like a clump of metal. And this can get really frustrating. So unfortunately, although they are easy to open and close the metals, they just do not work out well for most of your jewelry collection. Of course, if you do prefer to have metal clasps, make sure that the metal is very, very strong for your gemstone necklaces. 
Now I'm going to show you the rest of the class that I have here that you may not encounter very often, but you might have in your collection so you want to know how to use them. These two here are the ball class. So these are called ball and chains. As you can see, each chain ha is held together by little balls and little uh, chains between them. So the clasp part involves one side of the ball lifting out of the little socket and then you can just insert it back in to secure. So it just lives in that little socket. That's the ball and chain clasps. Then we have the slide clasp. And the slide clasp, one side, let me show you this way, one side just slides out of the other side. So it's very easy. It is great for multi-strand necklaces, this clasp in particular, because it has all the different holes. So just imagine five different strands of beads coming out on each end. This one is also good for multi-strand, so three strands of necklaces can be on this clasp. These ones are all called box clasps. It has a little, this one has a little lever that you press down and then you slide out the little tab from the box. And then you clip it into place when you're done. This one here, you clip down and then you can slide back in and it clips into place. This little rose one also has a little tab on one side and you can clip it back into the little slot to secure. And this circle is also called a box clasp. And the same thing. So there's a little tab, there's a little insert, and you just press it down to secure into place. Some of them are a little weaker like these ones, so I would not use them with the heavy gemstones. This one would be good because it is pretty big and secure. These three, not that secure. And then I, lastly, I wanted to show you the clasp less necklaces. So these ones don't require a clasp. You will have to know what size your head is so you can slip it over without using a clasp. So of course, if you have longer necklaces with clasps, you can also just slip it over without using the clasp if your head is small enough for that necklace. So this one here is a cord, but it is secured without a clasp. So you can just slip this peridot fishbone necklace right over your head not even worrying about any clasps at all. Now that you are an expert at opening and closing your crystal necklaces, come join us at Satin Crystals. We have a whole collection of natural gemstone necklaces for you to add to your collection. While you're there, join the Satin Crystals VIP Club as we have crystal healing information sent to you every single week. We also have an SMS program where we text out the most important of those informations every week as well. As always, thank you for your positive energy at Satin Crystals and thank you for spreading your light into our worlds.